Coming up on today's show, Tesla's Q1 earnings call reveals Tesla's latest financials and takes a very bizarre turn indeed. Europe has a new leader in terms of electric car sales, and Nikola sues Tesla for patent infringement over truck design. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, I'm Nikki, your resident Ecotech host. And as usual, I scour the internet in search of the very best in clean car and energy news for you to enjoy every week. As always, thanks for joining me. We're starting, where else could we start, with the recently published Tesla earnings for Q1 of this year, which show that while revenues have increased to 3.2 billion US dollars, the company ended the quarter with 2.7 billion US dollars in cash versus the 3.4 billion US dollars it had at the start of the year. And while Tesla managed to continue to ramp up production of its electric cars, its losses grew to a record $784.6 million. That's $4.19 per share if you're interested. But what perhaps caught everyone's attention wasn't the balance sheet, which wasn't so bad, but the way in which Tesla CEO Elon Musk snubbed analysts in the Q1 earnings call, calling their questions boring and choosing instead to answer a string of questions posed by a 25-year-old called Gally Russell, a self-confessed Tesla fan, retail investor and YouTuber. It's one thing to snub journalists in a wider context, but when the purpose of the call is to discuss financial results and is put on specifically for financial types, it seems a little bizarre that Musk chose to do this. Following the call, Tesla's shares tumbled, losing nearly $30 a share on Thursday morning before recovering a little before the end of the day. That said, Musk did let quite a few carrots dangle during the earnings call as usual, including claiming that Tesla's Model 3 battery cells are the highest density cells used in any electric vehicle and use far less cobalt than any competing cells. In addition, Musk claimed the production version of the Tesla Semi would have a range nearer to 600 miles, said the Model Y will bring about a manufacturing revolution when it launches in 2020, and blamed a flufferbot not picking up seat stuffing correctly for some of the problems it suffered on the Model 3 production line. He also criticized Daimler's CEO as not knowing anything about physics and poured water on Porsche's rapid charging plans. If you haven't heard the call in its entirety, it is worth listening to. I'll link to it in the show notes. It's well known that Norway has been the largest electric vehicle market in Europe for many years, with both the largest EV adoption rate per capita and the largest overall volume of EVs sold. But figures released this week show that that's now changed, with Germany selling a total of more than 17,570 cars during the first three months of this year, placing it above Norway in the EV market in Europe in terms of vehicles sold. The surge in demand for electric vehicles in Germany represents more than a 70% growth compared to previous years. And while it does include fully electric models, as well as plug-in hybrids, it shows that German consumers are really starting to make the switch to EVs. This year, we've covered a lot of stories about autopilot and other semi-autonomous vehicle incidents, often ones which result in a collision, injury, and occasionally death. But late last week, a UK man was banned from driving for 18 months after being caught sitting in the passenger seat of his wife's Tesla Model S while it drove itself driverless along the M1, which happens to be one of the UK's busiest motorways. It's probably a good point here to remind you all that autopilot and other similar features, while very impressive, aren't substitutes for human drivers yet. And if you're using a car with those features, you should make sure someone is behind the wheel at all times, alert, and ready to take over. Don't be the person who spoils it for everyone else, eh? Back at the start of this year, the lovely Kate Walton Elliott and I got to see firsthand the concept version of the Kia Nero EV, an all-electric version of Kia's popular compact crossover. At the time, Kia said the Nero EV would likely have a range of 238 miles per charge, but this week we've learned that it's now been revised to 235 miles, which is 378 kilometers, if you were wondering, per charge. It's also released information about the two battery packs it hopes to offer customers, a 39.2 kilowatt hour one with 2018 Nissan Leaf-like range and a larger 64 kilowatt hour one that gives the aforementioned 
235 mile range. Sadly though, Kia isn't expected to offer the smaller battery option in the US, effectively cutting off a more affordable entry-level model from the market. In the world of future transportation, there are often interesting patents filed by car companies eager to protect their IP from a rival firm. And usually those patents filed, while sometimes an interesting insight into what could be coming down the pipeline, generally never make it into a production vehicle, which is where we're going to put this bizarre patent from Ford. Granted recently, this concept, uh, Ford's calling it a multimodal transportation apparatus, includes the idea of integrating an electric motorcycle or scooter into the front of a regular hybrid or electric car, allowing the driver to ride the scooter the final few miles to work while the car sits further out of town. It's a bizarre patent, and given that it was applied for 18 months or more ago, isn't something I'm going to expect seeing on the road anytime soon. What do you think? With autonomous vehicle technology getting ever closer to production vehicles, there's something of a discussion going on as to how autonomous cars should behave on the road. Initially, autonomous cars were super cautious, causing other road users to take advantage of them. Then they became a lot more aggressive, behaving more like human drivers. But now there's a new study going on in the UK where an insurance company has partnered with an Oxford University spin-off to gather and share data from three autonomous cars operating in and around Oxford. The goal? To see if insurance companies can help software companies and automakers design the safest autonomous vehicle algorithms they can, ensuring the cars drive in a responsible but confident way that avoids accidents keeps passengers comfortable and avoids other road users taking advantage of robot cars. It's going to be interesting to see the results of this collaboration and as always, I'll share them with you if I have them. Uber may be out of commission with its autonomous vehicle ride-sharing service, but this week Aptiv, formerly known as Delphi, launched a new autonomous vehicle ride-sharing service in Las Vegas with Uber's biggest rival, Lyft. Interestingly, however, unlike similar projects, Aptiv's self-driving cars will be accessible via the Lyft network and should be no different to riding in any other Lyft. However, you do have to opt in to take part in the program, but you can hail them just like any other car. Having seen one of these cars in the metal on the Las Vegas Strip, I can certainly say they seem extremely competent, so I'm excited to see what happens next. This week, it seems, is just not Tesla's week. In addition to the weird earnings call midweek, the sentencing of the Tesla autopilot abuser and the class action suit, Tesla's rival in the trucking world, Nikola Motor, has filed a patent lawsuit against it. According to the papers, Nikola says that Tesla infringed on its fuselage design, wraparound windshield and mid-entry door, all of which it has patents for. Tesla fans, of course, are calling this a patent troll move, but Nikola says that the design similarities between its Nikola One and the Tesla Semi has caused more than $2 billion of missed business. Moreover, since Nikola One unveiled its truck long before the Tesla Semi was shown to the world, this one could go on for some time. And finally, to date, if you've enjoyed taking an RV on a long road trip holiday, you've had to fall back to a gasoline or a diesel powered vehicle if you want anything larger than a Nissan ENV 200 minivan. And if you're an electric car driver, there is a lot of guilt that comes from driving a vehicle that gets single digits per gallon. Well, it may not be the case for long. Winnebago Industries, the company behind the iconic Winnebago RV, has unveiled an all new electric RV that will initially be used for urban duties like blood banks, a Class A RV based on the all-electric Ford F53 chassis as electrified by Motive, the vehicle should have an all-electric range of up to 125 miles per charge. That's 200k. Sure, that's not a huge amount, but it's a start, right? And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, well, you know what to do. As always, I'll be back soon with more Ecotech goodness. So make sure you hit that subscription notification bell to find out the minute a new show is uploaded. In the meantime, have a great weekend. Make sure you do something fun. And don't forget to help keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. That's it. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.